My name is Nick Castro. I'm the owner of My Fashion Affairs, and this is Stitch. What is fashion? Fashion, to me, is everyone's own personal take on their, their expression to the world, right? So fashion is how everyone wants people to look at them. I always use the saying as, you know, dress how you want to be addressed, right? So depending what you're into, what you like, it could be corporate fashion to streetwear fashion. You can be versatile, but it's really how you want to be addressed. That's fashion to me. In your opinion, what is an absolute fashion no-no? It's crazy because one of the big fashion no-nos to me used to be pairing black and brown together, right? Um, it got to the point though where I, I grew out of that because I like Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton has black and brown stuff, right? So it came to a point where like certain sneakers would come out and they have black and brown in it. But as far as like wearing a, a brown belt and black shoes, to me that's a no-no. Uh, but as far as mix matching as with certain pieces, it can work to a sense. But for me, if the belt, and I'm talking about mainly like if you're dressing up in like, I don't know, shirt and tie, you can't, to me, it's a no-no to have black shoes and a brown belt or vice versa. What is your fashion go-to? <laughs> My fashion go-to, honestly, is a white tee. You can pair it with pretty much anything. It's straight to the point, it's simple, it's basic. You can wear something loud, you can wear something, you know, mute. But a white tee, I mean, I'm from Port Tampa, South Tampa, I mean, that is just, I just grew up wearing, you know, white tees. Can you tell us the story behind your brand? Absolutely. The name of the brand is called My Fashion Affairs. The meaning behind the brand is I am very into clothes and fashion, but it got to the point where it was a little excessive for my wife. She started accusing me of cheating on her with fashion but mainly because I kept having too many shoes delivered to the house. I would always try to hide any bags. I'll come home from the mall. I've always wanted my own clothing line and I named it My Fashion Affairs. Can you tell us about your brand name? What does it mean? So the name My Fashion Affairs pretty much came from, again, the story behind the brand is me being infatuated with clothes and fashion, anything, all things related to fashion. And it's mainly me really infatuated with, with clothes and shoes and, and hats and socks and jewelry to shades. It's just really my, um, my infatuation with clothes and just really wanting to be fly. Like I, I just, as a big dude, I'm, I can't be sloppy and big, right? So I need to be also, you know, presentable. I always got to be dressed up, going to the gas station, getting gr growing groceries, checking the mail. I mean, not checking the mail, but I mean, when you're out in public, you want to be presentable. So I'm always wanting to be in nice things, and that's where my affair with clothes comes into play. What is your logo? How did you create it? So my logo is, my main logo is a broken heart because I'm having an affair with my wife on clothes. Or I say, let me say that again. I'm having an affair on my wife with clothes and the shades is myself. All my folks and people that know me know that every time they see me, I'm always in shades mainly because I'm, I'm sensitive to the light, but I'm always gonna be in shades. They happen to be designer, but I'm always gonna be in shades. So the Broken Heart in the Shades is pretty much the logo. Well, the Broken Heart is the, is the meaning behind the brand, and the shades is myself. It's kind of my own stamp on my logo. What was the world's first impression of the brand? 
people laughed. Um, they laughed in humor of the story behind the brand because when I would tell people about the brand, I'm literally just telling them the story about how the brand was incorporated. It's funny, but it makes sense. But everyone has, I've gotten up but positive reviews on um, the brand itself and when I would tell people the meaning behind the brand. What sets my fashion affair apart from other brands? For me, it's the story behind the brand, the meaning behind it. There's a lot of brands out there that have, they, there's a lot of brands that have meaning behind it, but they also have causes to it. My brand, the meaning behind it, what sets it apart is just because I wanna dress up and be fly. I like nice things. I always wanna be fitted. Um, I'm sure everyone likes that for their brand as well, but that's pretty much the meaning behind my brand. And outside of that, I'm really, break, really trying to break into that luxury streetwear market tier. So everything I have is always gonna be, you know, the highest quality that I can afford as far as what I want to bring out to the world. Um, but I think mainly the story behind the brand is what sets my fashion affairs apart from other brands out there. What type of customer do you see wearing your brand? <clears throat> That's a great question. Honestly, I see anybody technically can wear my brand, right? I, I, I would love for everyone to be in my brand, but all of my pieces are exclusive because I never restock once I sell out. So the typical clientele that I can see my pieces on are people that want the exclusivity, people that understand premium and quality, that are okay with paying um, a higher tier price for an item because of the quality and the make of the product. Um, if I was to do like a celebrity status type of person, um, I could see like Fabulous in my pieces, LeBron James. I mean, a lot of the fa fashion icons, I could see them wearing my pieces. Can you tell us about the creative process that inspires you? So the creative process that inspired me, I mean, let me just backtrack a little bit. I've been really in the clothes since elementary school and I, I can honestly say like third and fourth grade um, from w winning notables like best dress from elementary middle school and high school um, it's always been in me to be fashionable um, and my creative process is really um, just everything that's around me uh, as far as like I can I love to mix low to mid-tier pieces to high-end pieces. I'm talking about from designer pieces to picking something up from Target. I love to mix and match it. And because I like doing that, that's kind of what inspired me to create more of a higher, a higher mid-tier piece. How long does it take to create a design? It all depends uh, for me. Um, it could take I can sleep on it and think of a design, or it can take me a couple months. I even outsource some of my designs to try to get other people's feel on the brand and really get an understanding of what they see based on the story behind the brand. Because I know, I know what I know designs that appeal to my brand that that resonate with my brand. But I love to get other people's ideas and feedback based on what they hear about the brand, what, how do they see the brand? So, you know, it could take quite a bit of time based off me, you know, getting feedback from peers, getting feedback from other brand owners, um, and just kind of like taking all the information and putting it together. So it could, like I said, it could be an overnight process to several months process. Can you elaborate on the designs you brought with you? Absolutely. So what I brought with me are actually a sneak peek of what my fall winter collection is going to look like. I'll just give you like a, a background behind the brand. So I have, the name of my brand is called My Fashion Affairs and 
my fall winter theme collection is gonna be Fashion Therapy World Tour. So just like how there's Beyonce concerts and Yeezy concerts that have tour dates on the back, I will have iconic shopping destinations or um, places that are like known for fashion. Uh, so for example, I have a heavyweight uh, hoodie here, a drop shoulder hoodie. It says Fashion Therapy World Tour collection. So here is one of them. I have a saying, I even have it on my shirt. It's just more of a, a basic, you know, fashion therapy tour hoodie as well. Two custom denim that I have here. So I have a custom heavyweight denim jacket. You can't, you may or may not see it, but it has my FA, you know, laser printed in this denim, which is, stands for my fashion affairs. I have custom buttons, just like a Levi's button, but it says my fashion affairs. It has my logo in the middle. I have embroidery in the back to, you know, a custom label in here. So this is another one of my pieces. I have several pieces that I have coming out for this collection down to the, the custom tree camo. You can't really see it, but I have tree camo pants that I have on right now. It has my logos all in it. Um, my most recent collection from, you know, my summer pieces. I just brought some of my top selling pieces, which are my, my FA shorts. I call them Daddy Dukes or people call them Hoochie Daddy shorts for the summer. And it's, I use NBA jersey material. It's double line. I got zipper pockets to, I have a, a, a custom chenille um, embroidery patch with a 3D embroidery on top of it. I have a, you can't see this, but I have a, have back pockets also with embroidery it says my fashion affairs with extended drawstring and this has been you know my shorts have been one of my top sellers in my collections i just bought a few so you can see the color variations from you know that i have a lot of the stuff that i bring or i make are based on sneakers that i know are coming out or really sneakers that i have that it's hard to find stuff to rock it with but those are the pieces that i brought with me what fabric and materials did you use for these designs? Fantastic question. So this heavyweight drop shoulder hoodie, oh, I didn't show you the embroidery on top of the hoodie, says my fashion affairs. I use a 400 GSM uh, fabric, pretty much that equates to like a really heavy ounce um, hoodie. And then I have a, a lighter weight hoodie here. This is gonna be like more of my mid-tier piece. It's a 350 GSM. Um, it's a little bit lighter in weight. Um, I don't have that many colors. It's more of a, just a, you know, one color outside of my logo on the sleeve. To a heavyweight denim that I have. Again, this is the, a custom piece that I'll be dropping. I have another color as well. Um, but I only brought a few pieces as a teaser just to kind of show you what I have coming up and what I plan on dropping or what I plan on showcasing in New York for my fashion show I have coming up on September 10th. Any trims, accents, or details we should be aware of? Well, we'll start with this fashion therapy tour hoodie. If you look, everything here is mainly what we call puff print in multiple colors. There's six different color variations here. I have a custom woven patch on the sleeve with my logo and it says my fashion affairs to the embroidery on the hoodie again that says my fashion affairs it's just a little details for me that that I like that I add on to pieces and again like my this denim alone I mean with the laser print my FA logos embedded in this wash to the custom buttons I mean, with these buttons, it's, it's, it's not like you could just get it you know, off the shelf. You have to like get them made by like 3,000 quantity at a time. So this is like one of the pieces is my buttons to, to the laser print embroidery, I mean the laser print within the denim. How would you incorporate these designs in an outfit? So my vision for my fashion affairs is to have Iconic pieces that could be worn by men and women that they keep in their wardrobe that they can wear year round. So from this denim jacket, you could pair it with another denim pants 
sweats, basketball shorts, I don't care. I don't always match and I want someone to like automatically just gravitate to grabbing my jacket versus a Levi's jacket if they're just gonna go to the movies. So from my, my, my denim jacket to be worn with anything to a hoodie that could be worn with anything as well. I mean, easiest match is you can rock white Air Force Ones to designer stuff. Like I, I always wear, I like to incorporate, you know, some of my designer shoes in my pieces, even with my shorts, to show that it can be worn with high, high-end, you know, designers, sneakers from like the Balenciagas to, to the Louis Vuitton trainers. Like you can mix and match that to wearing these with dunks. Even sandals, it don't matter. It's like, as long as you're confident with what you're wearing, it, it actually doesn't matter. But my pieces are more of a staple, and I want this to be what women and men gravitate to when they're grabbing something out the closet. How can people develop their own style? I feel like people can develop their own style based on how comfortable they feel with what they're wearing, right? If they, if they are comfortable on, on how things fit on them and how they look, then they can start from there and say, okay, I like oversized tees, so I'm gonna continue to wear oversized tees because I like the way it makes me feel. I'm comfortable wearing it, and it's something that I can pair with a lot of things. Versus someone who's still in that, that's stuck in like the skinny jean area, era, and they just wanna still rock skinny jeans, it's cool, I mean, I feel like anyone, if, as long as they're comfortable wearing whatever they're wearing, that's their own personal style. I mean, I can already say that a lot of my pieces are not for everyone, right? So everyone, it's not made for everyone. It's, it's made for people who feel it and like it. Like I always tell people when I was selling in the mall that I don't even sell. I tell my story and if they like it, they like it. If they don't, Thank you for letting me share my story with you because I want people to like my pieces and not just buy it to support and put it back in the closet. No, I want people to buy it because they know they want to wear it. And that's based off their style and if they feel my stuff. How has starting a brand affected your life? <clears throat> starting a brand affected my life. Um, both in a good and a bad way. The good way is this is always something I've been passionate about and wanting to do. I've been able to check some stuff off my bucket list, creating a brand. One of my, well, one of my bucket lists was being able to just have a fashion show in New York during New York Fashion Week. I get to check that box off because on September 10th, I am, getting, I am going to showcase my fall and winter collection with Noir Fashion Week in New York during New York Fashion Week on September 10th. I wouldn't have been able to have this opportunity had I not started a brand. The cons is um, I'm super laser sharp focused that I can easily forget other important things that's around me. Um, from just communicating to friends, family, um, to you know, really just looking at the outside world. Like, when, you're, when I have tunnel vision, I'm like laser sharp focused, so I can easily just forget some of the things that's around me. Those are some of the cons for me. What change did you have to make personally to see your brand succeed? So one of the big changes that I've had to make, so I liked, I had to stop being selfish, right? What I mean by that is, I design stuff that I would rock and something that it would appeal to me. Um, I had to um, change my focus and get feedback from what other people also want to see. So opening it up to getting feedback from other people and kind of shifting some of my designs to what is not necessarily trending, but what people want is been um, a shift in my business. It's a good shift, but it, it still changes. So with me just still hitting a little over a year, this is all still new to me. It's a learning curve. And um, those are some of the changes I've been able to incorporate uh, during my, my time. I mean, I feel like I'm, my brand's still in its infancy stage with it being just a little over a year. Has there ever been a time where you felt like giving up on your brand? 
Oh yeah. What I'm, I'm going on 15 months. I probably quit like 50 times in the past 50, you know, 15 months uh, from things not going my way. But what I've learned as being an entrepreneur, we solve problems for profit. And if something doesn't go my way, I need to figure it out to make it go my way. What has been the highest point of your brand so far? My highest point is coming. <laughs> my highest point of my brand so far is me being able to check off my bucket list or one of my bucket lists. And again, I have been blessed with the opportunity to showcase my fall winter collection in New York during New York Fashion Week. This has probably been the biggest highlight for me. And right now, I am really just um, taking in this journey that I'm going on. I don't know what's going to come out of it, but I know I'm excited about it. What is your number one problem with the fashion industry and getting your products to customers? My number one issue, I mean, I don't have a problem with delivery. My number one issue is people seeing my stuff. So from social media to just marketing, um, what so many billions of people in this world, I, I'm like 0.001% of the people that actually see my stuff. So the biggest challenge is getting people to see my stuff so I can get it out to them. But if they're not seeing it, they're not really, they don't know about the brand. So the biggest thing for me is marketing and exposure to the brand. How do you see fast fashion affecting the world? <clears throat> so fast fashion, has its goods, it has its pros and cons, right? The goods, the good about fast fashion is that a lot of people have access to it. The bad thing about fast fashion is like the quality and some of the material are, are not as great where they don't last long versus something that's more high premium quality would last longer. So something that's fast fashion, that's not necessarily like, I use the word affordable, will be pieces like in Forever 21 or H&M. It's easily accessible where people can get it at a, at a fair price. Um, some quality may, I mean, some stuff may be higher quality, but there's also stuff that's on the lower spectrum of, of quality that's uh, very affordable that people can get, but they also don't last as long. So that is one of the, you know, I guess that's the pros and cons. Easily accessible, but as far as longevity, it, it's not a long, a long lasting statement piece. If someone was starting a brand, what advice would you give them? My biggest advice is know your why. Like, why are you starting a brand? And so a couple things, know your why, it all ties together. Why and your vision, like, and your story behind the brand. Why vision and story kind of all play together. So biggest advice is narrow that down so you can get a clear picture of the direction you want to go to. Because it's hard not knowing your why you're doing this and really putting your all into it. And then without your vision, there's no, your, 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 your forward projection thinking is cloudy. You don't know where you want to go. And your story, people buy this buy the story before they buy the clothing. They buy you and the meaning behind the brand before they buy a piece. It could be a fire piece, but if they don't know what it means, I mean, they may kind of skip over it. How are you marketing your brand to your audience? So initially, um, I started online and then I gravitated to opening up a, a store in Brandon Mall, a kiosk. And I did it for several months. And I quickly realized that I wanted to transition back to online. So I've been mostly focusing on e-commerce and branding the brand, you know, through social media, through email marketing, text mark, SMS marketing. Um, but that's how I've mainly been bringing my brand to my consumers. Can you share with us the meaning behind your latest collection, Fashion Therapy? Absolutely. So Fashion Therapy World Tour, the meaning behind it is 
Um, with my fashion affair as a brand, it's really tying in, you know, your fashion affair, like your 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 addiction to shopping and fashion. And so, again, the meaning behind my fashion affairs is my wife was accusing me of cheating on her. And having fashion therapy is like really having a therapy with a therapist, but it's a shopping therapy. And there's always, if, especially when you're there's a couple involved, there's always one or the other that shops more than the other, right? So it resonates with a lot of people who have that addiction to shopping and and just you know making it, it feels good when people buy stuff that they like because they like to wear it. So that's where fashion therapy came from and the meaning behind it. Where have you received the most support from? My biggest support honestly has been when I've been telling my story to people in person. So when I was in the mall, that was my biggest support because people were buying me and the story and then they would buy the pieces because they liked it. But that was my biggest um, support was when I was in front of people being able to tell my story about the brand. How do you plan to take your brand to the next level? Great question. I am in the phase of wanting to start wholesaling my pieces. My vision within the next few years is to have my collections in big box stores. Like, I would love to see my pieces in Neiman's, um, Saks, Nordstrom's, and those types of locations. Also, you know, some of the smaller high-end boutique, boutiques that be in the mall. I would love to start um, having my pieces in, in those stores as well. What do you want people to remember about your brand? I would love for people to remember the story behind the brand, as well as the, the quality behind the, the pieces. Again, everything is, is, is thoroughly thought out and seeked out as far as the, the best materials that I can get uh, to create my pieces. So everything I have is mainly cut and sew meaning I work with manufacturers directly. I give them my exact sizes. I tell them the, the materials that I want it to be made out of. And um, I do a lot of quality check at, when I get my pieces to make sure it's, you know, the best piece. It's to the point where I want to wear them. You know, I want to make sure everything is, is perfect. What can the world expect from your brand going forward? People or the world can expect for my fashion affairs to grow rapidly and be in a lot of locations and a lot of um, big box stores. They will be able to have access to it if they would like, and they can always get it online as the e-commerce will continually, continuously grow as well. Any new pieces coming out soon? I got quite a few pieces coming out. Right now, I'm showcasing my fall winter collection um, that I already have out. Here are a few pieces, but I have custom denim sets. I have some custom flare uh, camel pieces. I have some hoodies with uh, you know drop shoulder flare hoodie sets. I have women's um, pieces as well, and um, I got I always got new hats coming. And I have a, a varsity jacket coming as well. Where can people find and purchase My Fashion Affairs? My Fashion Affairs can be accessed via the website at myfashionaffairs.com. They can um, access anything online that's there. Again, I don't restock on anything that sells out. So once it's gone, it is gone. I appreciate it, brother.